folks, we are here with the world-renowned author of such books as Sister, Sister, and Milk in My Coffee. Please welcome Eric Jerome Dickey. Hey, how you doing, man? Good, good, good. good. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Yeah, so tell us first off, what inspires you to write these books? Uh, wow, I've written at this point about 17 different novels. And I just, I really just basically like storytelling. I love creating characters. Um, a few of my novels have taken place outside of the States because I enjoy traveling mm -hmm. now and using those locations okay. uh, in the stories. I've had stories that have taken place in, well, L.A. I've had a lot of stories that take place in L.A. But when I covered L.A., it was L.A. proper. It was Riverside or San Bernardino because I was always trying to find some part of L.A. that, for me, I hadn't, um, I didn't think any other writer was writing about, okay. you know. And, and then stories that took place in New York, uh, in Memphis, uh, Antigua, out of the country, uh, London. Now, how personalized are these stories? Are they bits and snippets? Do you pinch from your own personal experiences? Or do you see a certain place, a certain, like New York or Paris or, mm -hmm. or anything like that, and you, and you just start? Well, well it's because like, usually it's like the type of story I'm trying to uh, write. I try to find the, the right location. It's almost like being a location to, to make it work. Uh, when I did Milk and My Coffee, uh, it worked in New York better for me. You know, the subway, a different culture, uh, different characters. And, um, and then other books, you know, Antigua. Uh, it had this island feel. It had this island feel about it, you know. So I'm always looking for that, you know, something that when I sit down to write, this doesn't feel like any other book I've written before. Okay. And part of it is uh, creating different characters. Uh, and the other part is, you know, different locations. So hopefully when all that adds up, you know, you don't pick up the latest book and think, oh, well, this is just like milk and my coffee. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want each, it's, each is like, a, I guess like a child. You know, you want each to have his own personality. His own identity, his own, idea, his own personality, <laughs> something that... Um, that stands out about it. Definitely. Yeah. So tell us about your relationship with the international black artists, yeah. writers and artists. Yeah. Well, actually, I started off with the international black writers and artists. Uh, uh, early 90s, uh, I, was living out, I was living in Pomona at the time, and uh, Sussano Writers Group, because I was trying to write that outlet, that, uh, that group that uh, couldn't get feedback. It's just me in my, in my room or my... Uh, Back then, it was like on a typewriter because I didn't have a I didn't have a Mac at the time. Way back in the day. Way back in the day, and um, and came in and it was a fantastic group. Um, eventually, I applied through them and they allowed me to go to a UCLA uh, through the extension program, and I took a lot of writing classes there. So for me, that was, I mean, just being here and with the group, that's really what made it possible for me. I mean, sitting. I mean, because I, I went back to UCLA. Like I was going back, uh, I was going back to University of Memphis to get a degree. Laid out the classes I want to take. Started from the beginning, you know, just the basic of basic, and and then just each uh, each class or semester just worked my way up from you know everything from how to write a short story. I mean, you're already writing, but you need to go back and get the basics. Understand what you're doing. You understand the man behind the curtain. You know, Fundamental. The fundamentals of it. And from there to uh, starting writing novels, to advanced classes, and just class after class after class. You know. Definitely. Yeah, so, so definitely for me, I mean, IBWA is, uh, LA chapter has always been a huge part of my life. You know, I've been a member since bef long before I was published, and I'm still a member now. Sounds great. So you have a great relationship with IB, IB, IBWA. IBWA. Right. So tell us how you, how you, how do you see how it has changed since way back when when you started and how you see it where you see it going where do you see IBWA going you know it's because we had you know IBWA is at 35 years now and it's uh and for people who are coming in writing is an ongoing process I mean this isn't this isn't about coming here to get famous you know this is about I enjoy writing I I want a group to, I want to belong to a group I want to nurture my talent uh, and you know, and it's and it's baby steps. Um, it's been around for 35 years. That says a lot. Yeah. You know, that says a lot right there. You know, um, the only thing has changed. I mean, the uh, IBWA's mission is still the same: uh, the love of writing, the love of creating. Uh, the only thing's changed is the internet. You know, just more access. You know, we're just more accessible to other people via Facebook or just so many other uh, social. Uh, 
outlets, if you will. Yeah. Which is, I'm sure, proved helpful in oh, yeah. getting the message of writing and, and, like you said. The message of writing, the message about the group, because uh, you, you want the word of mouth, you want people to come down, you want people to join, uh, and you want people to enjoy, uh, enjoy being creative. Right. Tell us about your inspiration for, for becoming a writer. How did, how did, how did, where did your creativity? Well, well, I, think, I think a lot of, uh, because we, you know, a lot of writers, we read. We, we read, so I, and we're reading, um, we're partaking of other writers' imagination, be it um, Alice Walker or Maya Angelou or Walter Mosley or Stephen King or Dean Koontz. And for me, the list just goes on and on and on. Because a lot of the, uh, the writers that I admired and still do, it was for, you know for different reasons. I mean, uh, it was sometimes it was the way they wrote, uh, their writing style, uh, what they wrote about. I loved uh, Stephen King's uh, scary books. I mean, because <laughs> yeah. I mean, one of the first Stephen King's I read was one his Richard Richard Bachman Fenner, and I remember just being just totally blown away. Couldn't wait to stop doing whatever I was doing in my life to get back to this book, you know, and um, you know it's just and it sparks that creativity inside of me and where you sit down you start messing with stuff and um, but you but you just definitely definitely have to uh, for me I had to take the classes I had to to get in I had to build I had to I had to understand what I was doing uh, you understand some basic stuff with storytelling but uh, it's a craft and 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 for me it's probably the more you understand it as you look back at what the other writers have done, you understand how they put a story together, how they put the chapters together, uh, beginning, middle, end, and uh, just a lot of, uh, so many different elements uh, to writing. Now, now, would it be fair to say, and I've heard some say that, well, Eric Jerome Dickey writes for the women. <laughs> would, that be, would that be a fair statement, or how, what's your approach? Do you well, you know, that's, that's never been my intent. I just write to write. I, when you start, well, that's marketing. Because the majority of people who buy books, be it black, white, the magazines, the arts, uh, churches, it's female. It's female. Yes, yeah, female driven. I mean, if you pull women out of, of church, it will collapse. You know, because it, just go to church and look around and see, look at the population. Uh, it's the same thing with books. You know, most, I think they said 90%, uh, the market is 90% female. Uh, but you know, I write what I write the way I write it, and it just kind of happens to fall that way. I mean, I've written so many different types of characters. I've written um, male characters, I've written female characters, uh, and I think for me, at the end of the day, what keeps the reader coming back, male, female, uh, it's hopefully it's a solid story that'll pull you back, regardless of whether it's a, a female protagonist or a male protagonist that's driving whatever particular story that they're reading at the time. We definitely appreciate you Thanks. for being here. Uh, on behalf of all the brothers, <laughs> all the men. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen. Because we read too. We read too. We Eric, write and we read. <laughs> Eric Jerome Dickey. Thanks.